Hi everyone, it's Adrienne Leah. For this video, I'll be discussing some herbal products that may be in a holistic first aid kit, and I'll mention some ways of how I'd use these products and other general examples of how they may be used. The products you choose in your holistic first aid kit is subjective. Maybe I'll mention some products that you'd be interested in including in your own. I'll read a script off of my laptop and write my references in the description bar. The first one I'm showing is Arnica 30C. Sorry. And enclosed in this container are pellets that you can ingest with its main ingredient, wolfsbane, Arnica montana. This is a plant extract and it's diluted. This is good because pure Arnica herb is poisonous. Homeopathic doses are generally considered safe to use. Also, this has the inactive ingredients lactose and sucrose. Arnica 30C is a homeopathic remedy that can act as a natural pain reliever, especially for instances of emotional shock, shock from physical trauma. It can also help with stiffness, discoloration from bruising and swelling. Arnica 30C is available as a cream if you'd like to apply it topically instead of ingesting it. You can put it on bruises, sprains, and blows, but the cream or gels may cause burning or skin irritation. Thir Arnica 30C can be used for more minor everyday instances. For me, I'd use it for arthritic problems. I occasionally get a stiff hip, which happens more often in the winter. I also get soreness if I knit or crochet for a while. This happens less frequently now though, and I can use it for sore feet. Arnica 30C is also great for traveling. I'll I definitely plan on taking it with me for when my husband, Pets, and I move back to Salem, Massachusetts. The next herbal product I'd like to discuss is Rescue Remedy. So it can look like this. This is a type of Bach flower remedy, and this is the dropper version. It's a blend of five different wildflowers, rock rose, impatiens, clematis, clematis, star bethlehem, and cherry plum. The combination is said to calm emotions down if you're suddenly or extremely stressed or upset. And some background information, Rescue Remedy was developed by Dr. Edward Bach in the 1920s and 1930s. He believed that illnesses caused were could be uh, because of negative emotions and these illnesses could be cured with flower essences uh, which is the product the vibrational energy and healing power of the infused flower flowers so most of my pets are seniors I feel like this would be a good herbal product if one of them passes away this could also be used for everyday stresses too so going into essential oils, I have two to show you guys. The first one is Clove Sigium Aromaticum Essential Oil. So this is a standard essential oil bottle. I love spices, so clove is an amazing herb for me. Clove comes from clove trees, which are native to Southeast Asia. And the oil is produced by distilling the dry flower buds and sometimes the stems and leaves uh, from the clove trees. Eugenol is one of the active constituents in clove which give it its fragrant scent. Eugenol also contributes to pain controlling, the pain controlling mechanism and antiseptic abilities. There are various uses for clove essential oil, i.e. it's commonly used for toothaches and muscle pain. You can mix the essential oil with more edible oil 
my coconut oil and you can soak the cotton ball and dab it onto the tooth but you have to avoid getting in contact with your gums. I've used this essential oil to relieve skin irritation. And in 2017, researchers in the National Institute of Health concluded that compared to petroleum oil, the essential clove oil can significantly relieve chronic itching. I have milk allergies and I get hives, but before I get hives, uh, my skin gets irritated and I sometimes get dry spots. So essential oil, clove essential oil is great for this because it has high antimicrobial, antifungal, antiviral, antiseptic, and stimulating properties. So there's less of a chance of getting a skin infection. Clove essential oil can be made into a mild disinfectant spray too. Lastly, I've used clove for when I have headaches. The flavonoids and clove oil have anti-inflammatory agents which would ease the inflammation while having a cooling effect. The next essential oil can help in similar ways, but I prefer the scent of the clove essential oil. So the second oil is lavender, lavandula and gustifolia essential oil. It's not one of my favorite herbs, but it can do a lot. I'll give some examples of what I'd use it for. I'd use lavender for its essence. The French cultivate lavender and their essential oils make perfume to make per perfume. Those who wear lavender may feel calmer and less likely to faint or have headaches, especially tension headaches. It can also be used to relieve stress, anxiety, depression, and mood swings. It's an excellent nerve tonic. These benefits can help with my insomnia. I can put the lavender or essential oil on my bed sheets, clothes, or on myself before going to bed. It can also reduce oxidative stress, which is good for brain health and overall homeostasis. It's a potent antiseptic for wounds, where it can be made into an aromatic antiseptic spray. The lavender essential oil can be used as an insect repellent, reduce redness infection and pain because of its antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, and analgesic, analgesic properties. So for herbs, I also have herbs that can be included in a holistic first aid kit. I'll show chamomile first. Which is a gentle but potent herb. To note, there's also chamomile roman, uh, so chamomile german, matricaria recutita, and chamomile roman, anthemis nobilis. Uh, chamomile roman is typically gentler out of the two, so it's a good option for those who are treating their children. I love the scent of chamomile. It still has an herbaceous scent, but it's more on the sweeter fruity spectrum. This would be a great herb to make a cream out of because it can soften skin and relax tension in your muscles. Aside from the smell, it can be used to treat a wide range of condition, skin conditions like eczema and psoriasis because of its anti-inflammatory properties. It also has antiseptic and antibacterial uses. Its anti-inflammatory effects can also help treat metabolic syndrome which is something I use chamomile for. So metabolic, metabolic syndrome is a catalyst for other conditions such as heart disease, a stroke, and type 2 diabetes. It's also an antioxidant that helps with free radical damage to cells and has anti-tumor properties. It's an herb that helps with the aging process, so I feel like keeping an herb like chamomile German in your holistic first aid kit can go a long way. Sorry, I'm just checking the time. Um, I would use chamomile German for when I'm traveling and get an upset stomach. When used topically, it can reduce swelling and cramps. It can be used as a tea for stomach cramps. 
and can help with muscle aches, strains, arthritic pain, and menstrual, menstrual cramps. The next herb is peppermint mentha piperita, which is one of my favorite herbs. It's considered a cure-all, so I'll mention a couple ways I've used peppermint. I love how having peppermint tea with lactate eggnog, which is lactose free. I also, I would also drink iced peppermint tea if I were going on a boat because I get seasick. So it's important to have it the iced version. The menthol in peppermint is anesthetic effect on the nerve endings on the stomach, which prevents seasickness and nausea. I've also used it as an essential oil for my migraines because it's a nerving and anti-spasmodic, which is great for studying. It can stimulate the mind, allow me to feel more awake, alert, and aware. Brushing my teeth with peppermint has many benefits. Peppermint contains rosmarinic acid that blocks the inflammatory compounds, leukotrienes, while stimulating the production of prostat Clisines to open up the airway and improve breathing. It can also alleviate nasal congestion from allergies or colds or relief si um, sinusitis. Yara's scientific name is Achillea millifolium, and as the name suggests, it's associated with the legend of Achilles. It's said that Achilles used yarrow on wounds of the soldiers to halt bleeding and speed heal healing. Although it isn't certain of how much this is true, I can say with certainty that this hardy perennial is a wound healer. And to add to yarrow being effective on wounds, it can clean cuts, burns, ulcers, and inflame skin conditions and contain silica to repair skin damage issue. Skin There are many other reasons of why I'd want yarrow in my holistic first aid kit. I'll go into specific reasons. I don't sweat often, which can be unfortunate for when I get sick, have a high temperature, and have built up toxins. Yarrow is a diaphoretic herb that can help me sweat out, uh, sweat, cool my body down, and decongest me. Uh, sweat out a cold. It's important to drink water after drinking yarrow tea. Another we reason why I'd use yarrow is linked to the first reason in a way. I have heart problems and yarrow helps with blood related problems. Aside from regulating menstruation and reducing heavy bleeding, it can regulate high blood pressure. Increase circulation as it's releasing toxins from the blood and fight bacteria in the blood. Thirdly, yarrow can help with my dry patches for my milk allergy it contains glycolic acid that removes dead skin cells. Glycolic acid is also found in anti-wrinkle creams because it helps reduce the visibility of wrinkles and pores. I have two other herbs that you may want to consider starting in your um, having in your holistic first aid kit. The first herb is dandelion, Terra zaxcum officinal. This is the leaf. This resilient weed has amazing therapeutic uses. It's commonly known for treating liver disor disorders, i.e. jaundice, because it improves liver function. It helps with burning fat and allowing the body to be more energized. It can help also help reduce my blood sugar because dandelion contains Cachoric uh, chlorazenic acid as well as alpha glucosidase. This is a great herb for when I don't have enough sleep because it boosts immune immunity and increases red and white blood cell count. I frequently um, 
read and like having lots of hobbies, so my memory is important to me. Dandelion contains lecithin, which can increase the amount of neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which is involved, also involved in the formation of new memories, and it helps improve memory. The next and last herb is rosemary officinalis, and this helps slow down the degradation of acetylcholine as well. So rosemary is a special herb to me because it was the first herb that I picked up, carried the essence around, and started learning about. I actually don't have um, any rosemary with me because I finished the rosemary that I had. I originally carried it around to help with my migraines. It's an excellent cerebral tonic and brain stimulant, which helps with mental alertness, poor circulation, memory, uneasiness, loss of smell, poor vision, nervous tension, insomnia, etc. I take CoQ10 and Hawthorne supplements and occasionally rosemary supplements. So I don't experience the migraines and symptoms associated with the migraines anymore. Rosemary also helps me with uh, atherosclerosis symptoms with its anti-inflammatory properties, which is a natural remedy for the buildup of plaque in the blood vessels. As with many herbal products I discussed, there are uses. These are some of the uses that each one has. Because they're mostly faceted, it'd be a good idea to research the products to see what would be beneficial for you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.